My name is Joe. I'm uh, president of the DC Boys Car Club. I'm here at the Cherry Garage. And we're today we're going to do a very basic uh, 101 lowering of a Chrysler product from the 50s. The test bed is a, my 1952 Dodge Coronet. And what we're going to do is add lowering blocks to the rear end. Uh, I'll show you the process. Um, there's a few things I tried ahead of time, um, but I ended up with uh, like three steps to end up with the one I think I'm going to use. Uh, but anyway, we'll go through the whole process, show you the installation, and take some measurements and see kind of before and after. Hopefully, uh, you'll like the video and uh, I'll have a lowered car. All right, so this is the before measurements. We're just going to do a before and after. Um, I don't know what the stock factory measurements are, but I'm looking at the bottom of the molding, rocker molding. Look at that, just under 10 inches on the rear. I'm gonna move it to the middle of the door. Getting closer to nine, about nine and a quarter. And then on the front, and this is for before and after. Do at the front of the rocker molding. You know what, we'll do it right there. We'll look at right at nine, right there. Okay, so the installation is gonna be pretty straightforward. These blocks, this is the uh, end product of what I, you know, the samples that I did, this is one I'm gonna use. These basic blocks, it's an inch and three quarter wide, that's the width of the springs on these early Chryslers. And uh, this is a two and a half, it's gonna be a two and a half inch drop. Um, you will see the uh, process of coming to this uh, product, but uh, it's gonna be real simple. We're gonna use, uh, we're gonna take the tire off and on the driver's side of this vehicle, we got left-hand threads. That's very typical of Chrysler products of this year, uh, or this you know, era, and some Ford products and maybe some others. So I'm gonna take the tire off and we'll go through the process of installing these blocks. Okay, so here's the process of coming to the correct lowering block for this car. The process of making uh, initial one, then finding the right materials to make the second one that I eventually used. Okay, so here was my initial plan. This is some uh, solid stock I had sitting around and it was one and a half inch square solid stock. So I would um, cut them to the five inch length and stack them and I would have a total of a three inch drop. Um, that would be a little narrow on the spring, but it would still work. And this is a picture of a two inch square stock that I had that would have overlapped the spring and I just, and would have been heavy. As it turns out, even the one and a half inch stacked is a pretty heavy chunk of steel. Inch and a half stock. So I have plenty to cut four sections of so five inch to make two stacked. This is a picture of the tools I used, a measuring stick, a um, whiz wheel to clean up the metal, obviously a Sharpie and safety glasses. Safety first. This is the inch and a half inch stock cleaned, prepping for um, cutting it and then welding. This is uh, using a right angle to get a straight line to mark the cut line. And there's the first chunk. That is the inch and a half square stock and I'm using the first chunk to mark the cut line on the second chunk. There are the two pieces cut stacked, so those need to be welded in order to get the three inch drop. I beveled the edges on the top of one and the bottom of the other for the weld to penetrate and, and be roughly flush and clamped them together and my buddy Steve of the Decent Boys, Decent Steve, is a uh, Pretty good at welding, better than I am, so he TIG welded the two pieces. I decided to change gears a little bit and went to the metal um, supply and got inch and three quarter wide, which is the proper width for the springs. And I could only get it in two and a half inch tall, which for what, actually what I'm, I want is fine. In the future, I may decide that I want it deeper. This is me finding the center of the aluminum block that I eventually used. It um, 
it's pretty easy. I just uh, crisscrossed in the middle point and eventually drilled it out. So I believe uh, the, the final hole was 3 8 so that I could uh, tap it for the cap screw that would become the pen. And here's the rough assembled block with the cap screw in as the pen. All right, so this is what we're starting with. We have a axle over the spring and a shock mount. And the idea is to put the lowering block in between the spring and the axle pad. And in effect, that will raise the rear end, which will in turn lower the car that same amount. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, lift the other side, put a jack underneath it, and then we'll disconnect the U-bolts and raise the rear end, insert the blocks, bolt them back together with the new U-bolts and the blocks, and set it down, and we're rolling low. Okay, so um, next step, we're gonna get under the car. I'm going to loosen, take off the uh, lower plate that is the spring is sandwiched in between the plate on the axle and a lower plate. And we're gonna take that, unbolt that. Because the axle sits on the spring, it'll just sit there. We won't be able to just take that plate off. And then we'll raise the rear end. Like I said before, we'll insert the uh, lowering block uh, that should go pretty well. I've already preemptive kind of thing took the uh, spring and raised the rear. I took the uh, U-bolts off, raised the rear end, and did some measuring. The upper part might be a little tight, but I did bring a uh, drill bit, and maybe we might have to drill and open up the uh, pad on the axle a little bit to make it fit, but maybe not. Um, so here we go. That six-cylinder uh, <laughs> flathead engine. It's got well, what, 65, on it. 65 horsepower to the rear wheel. You know, it's gonna it need some levers on it. Maybe a nice supercharger off a of Thunderbird. These do respond well to turbos. So right now I'm taking the plate off the bottom of the spring. This should go pretty easily because I already loosened these bolts prior. Okay, uh, let's roll it in. I'll, I'll, aim it. I'll aim it and you can... All right, go ahead up with it. Just so want to raise the rear end, which we just put it right and then it'll go slow. That's good, just use the uh, handle. Okay, raising up. As you can see, we're getting separation from axle and spring, and it's coming up higher on the driver's side. That's fine. Keep going, Alec. So we get approximately the right. All right, leave it there. So locked in. Yep. Okay. Can you grab one of the uh, lowering blocks on the chair over here? I got it. Thanks. All right. So here we go. Let's see what happens. So the bottom hole registers just like the original, except for it's in between. Hole registers on the spring pad and it fits. And then the upper part will register in the axle pad and it fits. It's nice and snug. All right. So here we go. We're going to lower the rear end slowly. Okay, that was, uh, can you raise it just a touch now? Got to angle it. Come up. More? Yep. Okay, that's good. All right, so I just got to get it. Okay, try it uh, slowly again, lower. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm seeing some separation there. Uh, la 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 la. 
maybe the want me to lower it more. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, go ahead and take uh, take the weight off of it as much. As... All right, all the weight is off. That weight's off. Okay. All right, so I'm seeing some separation there. So obviously the pin that I built into the block is a little too uh, wide in diameter for the hole and the axle pad. So we're going to go back up with the axle. Keep going. All right. Uh, go ahead and raise it some more. And have I have enough room in here? My uh, answer to that, instead of trying to turn down the pin here, I'm going to drill out the hole to match. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit wider than the pen. So we'll have to get the drill out and the drill bit. Right. Okay, simply we're just going to uh, drill the hole in the axle pad to a size slightly larger. This is a 9 16th drill bit and that's uh, just over a half inch on the cap screw. Um, so that'll open it up enough to have that seat in there properly. It should drill through, there's a hollow, uh, to open it up and then, okay. yeah, then the axle pad will sit on top of the block. And let's see, we gotta get a little. Ooh. Might be able to shift the entire, yeah, I, I just, side. yeah, I just uh, realized because that tire is on, that side's gonna sit heavy. Move it over enough to get a good straight shot on the uh, for the drill. I can't really rotate it too much though. But you want me to push the jack? Whoops! Here it comes. Do it. Here it comes. Okay. Yeah. I think that gives us good room. All right. Um. Ooh. Real good idea if you want to save your drill bits is to put some cutting oil on here. Here it comes. Whoop. Should get us started here. A little more. No, nope, that should do. Um, that'll do. Okay, we're going forward. All right. Here we go. I don't know if it cut really much. I don't think you needed much. I didn't need much. That's the good news. Oh, yeah, sweet. Okay, cool. We're back in action. Here we go. Uh, go ahead, slow, please. Okay. Cool, that's it. Um, go ahead and take the weight off of it, or most of it away. All right, weight's off. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so yeah, so we're dropping it two and a half inches. These U-bolts are actually made for a three-inch drop block, so they'll be plenty adequate. Uh, but as you can see, they're the same width, um, and it's for the uh, for three-inch up to three-inch axle housing diameter. So, so these are made for this, not they're made for yes, a okay. um, a three-inch drop block. Okay, they're which, not just generic U-bolts you find at Home Depot. You can get these okay. um, in different lengths. That is a bit okay. long for just your standard Home Depot True. one, though. True. <laughs> yeah, Home Depot, I wouldn't expect to find too many auto parts there at Home Depot. All right, now we're going on with the U-bolts. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to stay away from pinching the brake line. Like most things, like this, even this is a simple project. It really helps to do it as a uh, a group. You know, have a have a, more than one person doing it, just in cases. Helping hands, multitasking. Okay. All right. So. 
Yeah, thank you. Line these up. Oh, sweet. In like Flynn. All right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's tight now. Okay. Yeah, so that's the insulation. Pretty straightforward. Um, and the beauty of it is that uh, if you don't like it, you can put different blocks in there. You can take the blocks out and put it right back where it was. It really is nifty. It didn't cost that much. The, uh, the blocks to get them at the uh, metal uh, supply and get them cut to the right length and put the cap screws in it was under $20. So it's a real simple and cheap way to do a mild custom dropping on a, this year uh, Chrysler, but even you know, different products from the 50s. So anyway, yeah, we'll put the tires back on and let's do some measuring and see how it looks. Using a uh, Daytona three ton low profile long reach uh, floor jack works really good. Highly recommend it from Harbor Freight. Whoa! Woo! Definitely lower in the back. Ooh, baby! <laughs> Rolling lower. Not <laughs> radical. Didn't want radical. Um, but it looks good. Got to get out of this garage. <laughs> and this garage has a bit of a steep ramp, so. Um, well, your car sits. Uh, let's let's take some measurements. Probably about the same. Started at what was it? Eleven? Uh, just uh, I think just shy of. You know, we'll have to go to the yeah. tape. <laughs> the just, I can just tell you what it is now. Yes, I think it was just shy of ten. Right now we're looking at ooh, eight and a quarter, which is about right. Two and a half inches. You know, keep you. Um, the the springs will settle a little, little bit since they were raised up in the air. They they'll settle a little bit. Uh, going to the middle again. What are we looking at? Just that eight and a half. And then the front shouldn't be too much different. Just at eight and three quarter. Um, the plan is to lower the front end in a future episode. Uh, we'll use some Aerostar springs. Um, maybe cut a coil off, not sure. Probably just install them and see what they do first. And that should lower the front almost about so that the uh, rockers are about level with the ground. It might be a little higher in the front, but that's okay. I kind of like the trail tail dragger look. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Um, I think it went pretty smoothly. I'm happy with the results. We'll have to drive it, but definitely thank you to Cherry Garage, Keaton and Alec. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you to my club brothers, the Decent Boys, and actually a uh, shout out to Decent Hector out in Indiana. Um, his uh, 53 Plymouth, they did similar procedure on his 53 Plymouth, and that just kind of inspired me to do it on this one. Once again, thanks for watching.